Let's go. I go by 44 Jap and you're watching Sim Intelligence. In this series, we're going to be diving deep into Sim card forensics and exploring the vulnerabilities and methods used to analyze, extract and clone data from a Sim card. If you're a fan of spy movies like I am, you've probably heard of Sim cloning. It's copying a Sim card's credentials in order to hijack calls, text messages and even track someone in real time. I managed to get my hands on a few devices with similar capabilities, so let's power it up and see what's possible in 2025. Before we get into the forensic software, let's look at a few tools in our toolkit. First, a programmable or blank SIM card. For this experiment or in any situation involving SIM cloning, you will need somewhere to copy or extract the data to, and that's where these programmable SIMs come in. Let me zoom in. This here is a multi-SIM adapter. This lets us convert SIM formats from nano to micro to standard all into one size and form factor needed for a smart card reader. It's super handy when you're working with various SIM sizes and you need to switch between tools quickly. Something that a few of you may not recognize are these SIM modules. And what these allow you to do is make calls and send text messages without the need of a mobile phone. I've actually got one connected to a Raspberry Pi here, which is a mini computer. And like I said, you can send text messages, make calls, all from this device or a laptop. So now I've gone through the tools that we're going to be using for this video. Let's get into the forensic software that we're going to be using to extract and attempt to clone data from these SIM cards. Let's go. Okay, so now I've inserted the SIM card into the adapter and the card reader. I'm now going to click connect and we are in. First thing you'll notice is a directory labeled MF. Now this stands for the master file or folder and it's the main entry point where all things stem from. Once we open that up, we can see a GSM folder and a telecom folder, as well as a file titled ICCID. Now the ICCID contains the SIM card's unique identifier, which is like a digital serial number. It's not hidden per se, as it's usually on the front of the SIM card itself, but it is worth noting. From here, we'll move on to the telecom folder, and this is where most of the user-related data is kept. Now the first that you may notice is one labeled the A. DN. Now the ADN which stands for abbreviated dialer numbers are basically your sims contact list or anyone that you've got saved to speed dial. You also see another file labeled FDN which stands for fixed dialer numbers and it's a security feature that restricts the sim card so it can only call numbers from a pre-approved list. And the third file that we'll examine is the MSISDN. Now this is what links your actual phone number to the carrier's back end. But let's move on to the GSM folder because this is where things get more network focused and sensitive. Now again we're not going to go through all these files but we will go through a few major ones. Now the first major file in the GSM folder is the IM MSI folder. This stands for International Mobile Subscriber Identity and it's crucial because it's what attackers often try to extract when using IMSI catchers and stingrays. Now IMSI catchers and stingrays are devices that act like fake cell towers to trick your phone to connect into them. Once your phone connects to it, it leaks the IMSI and allows whoever's running it to track your location and intercept communication. It can also be a gateway to SIM card exploitation if combined with other vulnerabilities or social engineering. Another major file in the GSM folder is the KC file. Now this stands for ciphering key and it holds the encryption key that protects your phone calls and data while they're over the air. Now this generates the key during authentication and it is used to encrypt data over the network like we said. If someone gets a hold of this during an active session, they can potentially intercept and decrypt your private data. But it is worth noting that the key changes, that's what makes it harder to exploit unless it's captured in real time, usually via a man in the middle attack or a SS7 vulnerability, which we'll get into in another episode. Another file worth noting is the SST, and this stands for the SIM service table. Now, this is a list of permissions that control what your SIM is allowed to do. It determines whether you can use voice calls, send text messages, use mobile data, and so on. We've also got an ACM file and an ACM max file. Now these stand for the accumulated call meter and the maximum limit for it. These are mostly used in prepaid setups to track how long you've been on a call or how much credit you've used. Now that we've seen what's on a SIM card, let's get into and test the cloning capabilities. And to do this, we're going to be using an app called Magic Sim. So we've got Magic Sim open here. And as you can see, I'm going to click the SIM card tab and it's going to ask us to set up the card reader. 
from this drop selection i'm just going to make sure that my card reader is selected i'm going to press ok so as you can see the sim card is connected it's got the model here which says sim card and it's got the icc id which we already spoke about from sim explorer files we said that the icc id was kind of like the digital serial number of the sim card so i'm going to head over to the clone tab let's see if we can crack the ki now the ki is an encryption key inside of the sim card that's needed in order to clone it and it gives us two options here normal mode and it gives us an option to run in strong mode now i'm not actually going to do a live cloning demonstration because youtube will take this video down even though this is for educational and security analysis purposes only but what this tool is trying to do is send thousands sometimes millions of challenge response pairs to reverse engineer the ki back in the early 2000s sims that used a weaker encryption could be cracked in under an hour but now you're up against rate limiting tamper resistant chips and hardware level protections unless you're working with a really old sim or a misconfigured one it's not going to be a quick thing so hopefully this video has given you a glimpse into how sim cards work the tools used to explore them the kind of data they store and some of the vulnerabilities that still exist in 2025 from encrypted keys and IMSI cloning to security restrictions, there's so much more going on behind that tiny piece of plastic that most people realize. If you found this interesting or learned something new, give it a like or drop any questions in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more deep dives like this. Thanks for watching. It's 44 Jack. I'm gone.